Welcome everybody to the Mitmac Masterclass of today. We're going to get into a very interesting discussion around who calculates the safety of a vehicle. How is it done? Is it a company? How do they actually go out and work out that star rating that everybody is talking about? Welcome, Anna Marie Meyer, as always, and Eddie Mahane. Let's get into it. I'm interested in this one. Think at different levels of your life, at different purpose levels of your life. You know, stuff like this actually starts to matter because when you're young, you're buying that GTI not for the safety features. No, no, no. You must just tell me it's fast. Fast and that, that sound, you know, <laughs> yeah. brr, brr, the sound that it makes. You're also buying it for the sunroof because yeah. you want to be seen. You're buying the, um, the Honda or whatever else car uh, that you are starting off with because of fuel consumption. You want to know how much is this car going to consume when I put a full tank? How much is a full tank? That's more important to you. But as you evolve, um, you uh, have children, uh, you are now in a position where you are affluent and you're worried about your safety, then it matters to you. And um, we're going to get into a discussion of how is it calculated. It's very interesting how it's calculated. It's very strange and it's a little bit of a secret. We're going to get into the first ever car to receive a zero rating. And who are the two manufacturers that received the five-star rating last year, 2021? Are you ready? Ready. Let's get into it. Okay, the company is called Euro Incap. They use a very strange formula, which is top secret, and it evolves the whole time. So if you got a five-star rating in 2021, it's not necessarily going to be a five-star next year because they need to up the standard the whole time, which makes everybody compete for that five-star. It's a brilliant marketing strategy. However, it's not necessary to have a in-cap, Euro in-cap rating, but would you buy a car without one at the level of life no. that you are now? No. No, not at no. All. That's, a, that's, a, that's the right answer. At 18, safety features are sort of on the, on the priority list right there at the yeah, back I hope this of the good involved. boot space. Yeah, but obviously, if you, if you are blessed enough and, and parents can give you advice, 100%. Yeah, by that time, the driver is more unsafe than, than <laughs> any feature in the car. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's the unsafest part of the car is the driver. The instrument behind the steering wheel. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful yeah. note. So it's four factors. I'm going to go ladies first. And it's safety for adults. Get into that, that part of the end cap. Adults sit in front. Um, you've got a different body design than the children at the or back. Or at the back, yeah. yeah. Or at the back. Or at the back. But of course, your body is different um, and you need to be able to take the impact. And that's the reason why it's important for, but it's for all passengers, but... It's differently designed. So in the past, we had an off-camera discussion with our team. There used to be a brave person that hopefully got paid a lot of money. It used to be a person that used to sit behind the wheel of a car and crash the car. And then they'll see, like, ah, only four ribs broken. Ah, you, you can do a next one. Now it's, it's very sophisticated. Yeah. Crash test dummies and, and all, those, uh, all those beautiful videos that we see of the brand new cars that they smash and they, they write off. Yeah. But yes, they do do that testing on, on different speed levels. Yeah, yeah, and different angles as well. Angles and impact. So number one, safety for adults. Number two, safety for children. Yeah. Um, remember, our, our families aren't the same. I see some parents, um, that excludes me, gets bullied by their little ones. <laughs> yes, to sit wherever they want. Yeah. So you don't get bullied by the little ones. No, 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 no. no. It doesn't happen no. in my car. <laughs> but features like isofix, um, being able to, to, to um, secure, the seat sec the yeah, seat. secure the baby seat, windows, door handles, that locker button there, just to make sure that you, the driver, are aware of everything that's going on in the vehicle. I mean, with the little ones, when you're driving with them, you can you can have them. Um, you can have the seat belt on. You can have a, si a six-year-old seat belt on now. But as you're driving, you don't know what might happen in the next few minutes. Agreed. They they most likely you most likely to just find them on your dash on your dash when you're braking. Yeah. You know. So you, you need you need those f features to help you. So it's a definitely a good guidance as to how safe a vehicle is. Number three, I'll grab this one because it's an interesting one. They actually measure 
the, the damage or the impact on a pedestrian as part of the Euro NCAP award. So how severe is your injury to your knees, to your pelvis, to your chest? And, um, you know, another off-camera discussion, I think it was Volvo, I could, yeah. be, I could be wrong, but I think it was Volvo that came up first with pedestrian airbags. So if you're driving a Volvo and I'm not looking correctly left and right yeah. and you hit me, the chances are an airbag is going to deploy when you hit me, which is awesome. And that's why they rate very high. I think it was Volvo. I, I know it, it was not a Toyota Tez. I had, I had one. No, it didn't have I actually air owned air one. So yeah, so <laughs> with the front so smashes, the I, had, I had to replace the bumper many times and we never found the airbag there. So <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. But that TT, the Toyota Tez always kept running and yeah. running. Yeah. No matter how many times you smashed it, ah. it will still run. Yeah. Eventually they'll steal it, but it will, it will run <laughs> somewhere else. It will run away from you. <laughs> Number four. The level of safety technology on the vehicle is also a factor that they use to calculate. The I'll, I'll bring up Volvo again. Yeah. It, it didn't even allow you to drive if you, if, if you smelled like alcohol. That's safety there, yeah. right there. I mean, well, there's a lot of cars. It's 100%. like the yeah. Subaru with the eyesight and obviously a lot more. We spoke about the Mercedes with the braking. So that is going to level up to a better rating. Mm -hmm. It's the more expensive vehicles, yeah. but you even mentioned the things like the ISOFIX, the level of the door handle for the children. So that's also a consideration, not only the self-braking and the ESPs and all those kind of things, but those are all the kind of things, the features in the car, that's going to level up with the rating. 100%. And, and the story I'll, I'll, I'll share with, with the people on camera this morning, 4.30 a.m., I'm late. I'm driving to the gym, I'm drinking out of a water bottle, there's a bus, I'm in the right hand lane, there's a bus, and I go, okay, let me overtake the bus. I don't use my indicator, by mistake, I forgot, because I'm drinking water. <laughs> the steering vibrates as I come to the left lane, and then I've never been woken up like that. There's a slower moving vehicle in this lane, the car hits brakes automatically, yeah. all that water is in my throat and in my face, and the safety belt pulls me back but I don't have an accident. Yeah. I'm like, geez, like, thank goodness I was driving this car. Safety. So, high safety, high safety, in cap rating. I wonder what would have happened if you were driving my Toyota test. Oh, who knows? <laughs> we would probably be looking for space right now. <laughs> probably, definitely be looking for space. So, is there ever, or has there ever been a car that had a zero in cap award? What do you guys think? Yep. There is. And, and unfortunately, it was pulled back quickly because yeah. obviously the manufacturer saw, listen, there's a design flaw. We need to pull back this product. The manufacturer is known for building great vehicles. They had an oopsie there. They measured it against what's acceptable and they pulled it back. And that was a Fiat Punta. Yeah. That was the first zero. And funny enough, the car... According to our research. The car did sell. That, yes. that shows you yes. we, we don't even look at these things because, I mean, there was already quite a number of them on the road by the time they were pulled back. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And again... Maybe targeting a demographic that's not really worried about yeah. NCAP safety, yeah. worried about something else. For 2021, we found two vehicles that have a five-star rating, which is very, very hard to achieve. First vehicle was a VW Caddy. Yeah. Can you believe it? Mummy's car. Yeah, the, the Mummy's car. It's got a five-star safety award. I was shocked when I saw it. As well, a car that I really like is a Nissan Qashqai. 2021 Nissan Qashqai is a five-star safety award. Amazing. I, I love both cars. They both drive well. And now I know that they're both one of the safest cars and on the road. That proves the point that I said your more expensive cars, like we mentioned Mercedes and the Volvos, is the one with the higher rating. So it's not necessary. There you can see. It's the even middle, normal, standard. Yeah. It's still got a good rating. But they focus on what counts in, in terms of, of in-cap nice. rating. Yeah. Always. Not nice to have, but safety. Safety, yeah, 100%. We found this topic very interesting. I hope you guys did too. If you want to educate someone on how it's calculated, please share. Also, hit the like button and subscribe. And ring the bell. And ring the bell. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, team.